Ever found yourself glued to the screen as the dusty roads of Hazard County witnessed the unforgettable adventures of the Duke family? The Dukes of Hazard, a TV series from 1979, brought the South to life with its iconic orange Dodge Charger, the General Lee, and the daring cousins Bo and Luke Duke. Remember the first time you caught a glimpse of the Duke boys racing through the countryside, outsmarting the bumbling Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane? Whether it was decades ago or just yesterday, the show's blend of action, humor, and down-home charm hooked viewers across the nation. Now, as you revisit those dusty trails, get ready for a ride filled with surprising, hilarious, and even somber facts about the series. Did you know there's more to Hazard County than car chases and Daisy's signature shorts? Stick around, and you might just be in for a few shocks. Speaking of surprises, have you ever stumbled upon lesser-known anecdotes about the Dukes of Hazard that left you scratching your head or laughing out loud? Share your favorites in the comments below. Let's unravel the mysteries of Hazard together. As you reminisce about your cherished moments watching the Duke family's escapades, we want to hear your stories. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to those unforgettable adventures? Drop your tales in the comments below and let's celebrate the Duke's legacy together. So, with the promise of funny, shocking, and sad facts awaiting, don't touch that remote the Dukes are ready to roll once more. In the late 1970s to the mid-1980s, American TV shows dominated Friday nights and Saturday evenings in the UK. Among the classics like The Incredible Hulk, Buck Rogers, The Eighteen, Knight Rider, and The Fall Guy, there was The Dukes of Hazzard. This show, known for its light-hearted and jokey feel, was a favorite for many viewers. The iconic General Lee and Daisy Duke stood out as highlights for audiences during that era. Contrasting this positive view, some viewers found the show to be a complete waste of time. Criticisms included poor acting, perceived stupidity, and overly childish humor. While Denver Pyle and Sorrel Book received praise for their performances, others in the cast were viewed would as mere eye candy, with their talents seemingly wasted on the cartoonish humor of the show. The narration, attributed to Waylon Jennings, was another point of contention, with some finding it annoying. Despite differing opinions on the overall quality of the show, many viewers acknowledged the memorable theme song as a standout element. Waylon Jennings, a great country singer, contributed to the show's musical appeal. In conclusion, The Dukes of Hazard left a mark on television during the 1980s with its mix of action, humor, and memorable characters. While opinions on its quality may vary, the show's impact on popular culture remains undeniable. In its inaugural season, the show showcased a more expansive Hazard County Sheriff's Department, boasting an additional five to six deputies alongside Sheriff Roscoe and Deputy Enos. This larger force played a prominent role in the thrilling car chases that unfolded on the dusty roads. However, a shift occurred when the production relocated to Warner Studios in California, resulting in a streamlined police force featuring only Roscoe and Enos. One endearing character integral to Sheriff Roscoe's comedic persona was his droopy-eyed basset hound, Flash. The credit for Flash's charm goes to Alvin Mears, the owner and trainer responsible for bringing the four-legged companion to life on screen. As a mid-season replacement for the unsuccessful Captain America series, the show emerged in the late 1970s, carving its niche in the Friday night and Saturday evening television lineup. Its unique blend of action, humor, and southern charm quickly gained popularity with the iconic General Lee and the unforgettable Daisy Duke becoming standout elements for viewers. The show's entry into the TV landscape during the late 1970s positioned it alongside other classics like The Incredible Hulk, Buck Rogers, The Eighteen, Knight Rider, and The Fall Guy. Despite its lighthearted and jokey feel, it sparked divergent opinions among viewers. While some celebrated the memorable theme song attributed to the renowned Waylon Jennings, others criticized aspects such as perceived poor acting, childish humor, and the divisive narration. Denver Pyle and Sorrel Book garnered praise for their performances, with their characters standing out amidst a cast that, for some, seemed to prioritize eye candy over talent. Despite varying opinions on the show's overall quality, it undeniably left an indelible mark on television during the 1980s, cementing its place in popular culture. Sorrel Book, portraying Boss Hogg, had a unique clause in his contract explicitly stating that his character would not engage in drug dealings or commit murder. This condition added a layer of constraint to the character, steering clear of certain darker plotlines. 
Uncle Jesse, Bo, and Luke Duke had distinct CB handles, adding a touch of personality to their communication. Uncle Jesse went by Shepard, while Bo and Luke used Lost Sheep, and Daisy was known as Bo Peep. These handles became a quirky aspect of the characters' interactions throughout the series. The show's theme, Good Old Boys by Waylon Jennings, transcended the small screen. Released as a single in August of 1980, the song featured an additional verse and an extended musical bridge. It climbed to number 21 on the Billboard Pop Chart and claimed the top spot on the country chart, solidifying its place as a musical success. In retrospect, the late 1970s and early 1980s marked a television era dominated by American shows, with the Dukes of Hazard standing out alongside iconic series like The A-Team and Knight Rider. The show's impact, however, was met with a spectrum of opinions from fondness to criticism. As the production shifted locations to Warner Studios in California, the Hazard County Sheriff's Department underwent changes. Initially, a larger force of five to six deputies added intensity to car chases, but relocation streamlined it to just Sheriff Roscoe and Deputy Enos. The series successfully carved its niche in the television lineup, becoming a mid-season replacement in the late 1970s. Despite varied opinions on the show's quality, characters like Denver Pyle and Sorel Book garnered praise for their performances. Flash, Sheriff Roscoe's droopy-eyed Bassett Hound, became a charming addition thanks to the efforts of owner and trainer Alvin Mears. The Dukes of Hazard, with its blend of action, humor, and southern charm, left an indelible mark on the 1980s television landscape. Waylon Jennings' contribution to the show's musical appeal, coupled with the unforgettable characters and memorable theme song, ensured its enduring impact on popular culture. The production of the Dukes of Hazard saw the creation and subsequent destruction of between 256 and 321 iconic General Lee cars, with fewer than 20 surviving in various states of disrepair. Interestingly, despite common belief, none of these cars were 1970 Chargers, as confirmed by the car builders involved in the series. Adding to the show's cultural impact, one of Daisy Duke's outfits found its place at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., a testament to the character's enduring popularity. In a behind-the-scenes revelation from the CMT inside the Duke's special, Catherine Bach, who portrayed Daisy Duke, shared that she once considered leaving the show alongside Tom Wapat and John Schneider. However, Wapat and Schneider convinced her to stay, highlighting the crucial role she played in the series' success. The dynamic among the cast and crew became a pivotal factor in the show's survival. In a surprising twist, the decision for Bach to remain on set was not just about the character, but the show's continuity itself. As Bach put it, her departure would have left the series with no one to come back to, emphasizing the interdependence of the cast in shaping the narrative. With a production history marked by the creation of iconic cars, a nod from the Smithsonian, and behind-the-scenes negotiations that preserved the show's essence, the Dukes of Hazard not only entertained millions, but also left a lasting imprint on popular culture. A peek behind the scenes reveals the delicate balance that kept the wheels turning, both on and off-screen.